Hey guys, Dr. Mike Isretel here for Renaissance Periodization, and I am the one of the co-authors for the Renaissance Diet 2.0 Super Advanced Diet Book. So we've had the Renaissance Diet 1.0 out for many years now. It was a great book when we wrote it. But over the years, it has become a, a little bit outdated. Or to put it better, we have expanded upon the ideas and clarified them to a considerable extent. The RP Diet 2.0 is now available for sale at renaissanceperiodization.com. The link is below. In this series of videos, the link will be below for the book for the entire time, if you're ever curious. The good news about this book is that it is unbelievably comprehensive look at everything diet for performance and body composition. The caveat to that is that this book is really meaty. It's hundreds of pages long. And you may very well want to get through all of it. And for those folks that labor through, I promise it's worth it. We're real proud of the book. You're going to learn a ton. But for some folks who might want additional resources through video format, we've put together this video series on every single chapter of the book. And we're going to go through, and for about five minutes per chapter, which isn't much because most chapters are, you know, 15 to 20 to 30 to 40 pages long, there's 16 chapters. For all of the chapters of the book, what we're going to do is give a five-minute brief synopsis and the super important take-home points. We're going to do that for additional learning for you guys, for review, and if you're not sure if you want to buy the book and you kind of want to learn some stuff about diet, just watch all these videos. And if you're super curious about anything, or you're just curious incrementally more and more as the chapters go on, or one chapter really just gets you and you want to read more about it, give some thought to purchasing the book. So you don't have to read the book. These videos will make independent sense without the book. But if you want it, the link's in the bio. So let's get started. First chapter in the book. Chapter one is the Diet Priority Pyramid. So where does this pyramid come in? Right? Well, here's the deal. We, the goal of the book is to improve our body composition, which is how much fat versus muscle we have, alter our body weight potentially, gain weight, lose weight, whatever we want, and improve performance in any variety of sports. Every single kind of sport there is, we can use our diets to improve sport performance. That's the goal of answering those questions, that's the book's goal. And in this chapter, we take a look at that goal and we bump up into kind of a problem right offhand. That there are so many different kinds of diets and diet ideas and features of diets that attempt to address these problems of how do we get in shape, how do we lose the most fat, gain the most muscle, alter our body weight, and get to the best performance we can, right? So there's like no shortage of diets. There's like a zillion diets and all, all, some of them are mutually exclusive almost in their suppositions. Some say, you know, gotta eat carbohydrates if you wanna perform. Some say you gotta cut all your carbs if you wanna perform, so on and so forth. And some diets emphasize different things. Some diets are really about calories. Some are about counting macros. Some are about nutrient timing. There's intermittent fasting, like you don't eat for a long time or some are, you, know, you gotta eat seven meals a day. So there's a lot of contradictions, a lot of approaches, but it turns out all diets really only ever change about six major classes of variable. Diets can alter your calories, how much food you're taking in. By the way, separate chapters coming on all of these. They can alter your macros, how much proteins, carbs, and fats you're taking in. Diets can alter your timing. So even if they have the same calories and macros as another diet, they might tell you to eat more meals, fewer meals, space the meals differently, so on and so forth. Diets can alter composition. Where are you getting those proteins, carbs, and fats? Are you getting the fats from nuts, or are they from oils, or are they from saturated fats, so on and so forth? Diets can alter the kind of supplements you take. Right, the very popular, uh, not so amazing diet is called the HCG diet, right? And it actually supplements HCG, which is a hormone, and then you eat in a certain other way, so it proclaims that the supplement is a really big help. There's other supplements you can take. We're going to figure out later how powerful they are uh, or how underpowered they are. And diets can lastly alter your hydration, what kinds of fluids you're taking in, how often, how much, so on and so forth. So we have calories, macros, timing, composition, supplements, and hydration. Altering all of those variables 
in particular ways can get us to any and every single kind of diet there is in the entire universe of diets. It's just altering those six variables, right? It's like if you alter how big someone's eyes are or how, how big their nose is, the nose shape, and then the mouth position and shape, like that's like kind of, you can make any face you want from that. But it's only like three or four variables and all of a sudden, boom, you get all the faces in the world just from altering those to some degree. Same thing with diet. Now, we can ask another question, and this is where the pyramid comes in. Are those variables all the same importance? And in reality, they're not. It turns out that some of those are way more important on average to determining your body composition, how lean, how muscular you are, and to performance than others. And they actually have a ranked structure, right? We'll get to why they have a ranked structure, but first, why does it matter which ones are most important, which ones are least important? Right? We know for sure some of them are way more important than others, uh, so on and so forth. We'll talk about that in just a sec, how they rank up. But why does it even, why do we even have to ask that question? Why can't we say, well, you know, everything matters. Everything's important, right? You know, uh, if you had an, uh, a, you know, a language teacher uh, in, you know, the seventh grade and you asked uh, the teacher, you know, what's more important, you know, spelling or grammar or sentence structure, she would look at you very perplexed and say, well, all of those are important. You can't ignore any of them. But it turns out that in, in complex dynamic systems, there are usually to every system very important features and features that are less important. For example, if you were building a car, what can we consider as more important to the car? The fact that it has four wheels, the fact that it has some kind of driving system, like a propulsion system, an engine, the fact that it has a steering wheel of a kind of design that you like, or the fact that it has a stereo system that plays the sound that uh, you know really makes the car an enjoyable drive. Well, you know, if you gotta get from point A to point B, wheels are non-negotiable. The type of engine you have may be important depending on how you wanna drive, but you for sure have to have one. A steering wheel type is a very, very minor importance. I mean, you don't really care about it that much. That's just a preference. And the kind of music you listen to, I mean, geez, you know, there's a lot of stereos that most people just don't care about. They just don't make that big of an impact in driving experience. I'll tell you what, if someone says, hey, do you want wheels for your car or do you want a good stereo system? Nobody's really going to answer, I want a good stereo system. And the second part of it is, if you're trying to do as best of a diet as you can and you have infinite resources and infinite time to both learn about diet and to execute your diet, sure, you can learn it all and you can execute it all perfectly and it doesn't really matter what's more important and what's not. Almost none of us have that. We have jobs, we have families, we have the real world. And we can't spend forever re reading and learning all this stuff. That's why you guys are watching this video, because it's only a couple minutes long. So if we take that into consideration, we really need to know what the most important stuff is so we can get it nice and checked in, right? If you want a car to take a package from point A to point B, you gotta say, does it have wheels? Yes. Does it have an engine? Yes. Can it be steered? Yes. Is it rudimentarily safe? Yes. Great. We'll take it, right? Because you're trying to get somewhere, you're trying to get to fitness and health with limited resources, you got to know what the most important things are. What are they? Well, calories are the most important on average in diet and uh, body composition for, uh, or diet for body composition and for performance. Calories account for maybe 50% of all the variants. Huge, huge part. Macronutrients are next. Right? Macronutrients might account for something like 30% uh, of all the variants, right? So, how much protein you eat, how many carbs you eat, and how much fats and the ratios between them account for a good deal of body composition performance. For example, if you're trying to lose fat, but you cut all your protein super low, you'd lose a whole crap ton of muscle. Real, real bad news. Now, you can't just lower your calories and be like, ah, whatever, I just eat whatever, just as long as it's just a calories. Yeah, you'll lose weight, but you'll lose a whole lot of muscle and way too much of it, and your performance is just gonna go straight down the drain. So with calories and macros, 50 and 30, we have 80% already. Nutrient timing is a bit less important. It's at 10%. 10% is a detail, and if you really just want to stick to the basics, a plan like intermittent fasting, or if it's your macros, can take you 80% of the way there, super cool, not really doing a super great job on timing. So timing is a bit more of a detail, but 10% can, can mean a big difference. And if you're a competitor, 10% can mean the difference between going to regionals and going to nationals. Real, real big deal then. Food composition for health, which is a topic of another book we have, Understanding Healthy Eating, um, not this book, this is for performance and body composition. For health, food composition, where your food comes from, is it super healthy food or not, that actually means a lot for health. But interestingly enough, for body composition performance, especially in the shorter term, it doesn't mean much, right around 5%. So 
If you get most of your protein from soy protein, maybe not the greatest source, or even combined vegetarian sources, which are not super great, or if it's pure egg protein or you know, milk fractions, which are super, super high quality, you know, for body composition and performance, it doesn't matter a whole lot where that protein comes from. And as long as you get your carbs, not a huge deal. So composition is about 5%. Supplements to uh, not many people's surprise, but some are also 5%. And that's counting every single supplement together. Supplements just aren't a big deal right? Hydration actually gets lumped into supplements because hydration is so easy to do right that we gave it a pretty low priority ranking, right? So all of that forms 100% together. What we're going to do over the next couple of chapters is navigate every single one of those individual elements and try to put them in context, describe them. What does it mean to get your calories right? What does it mean to have good macros? What, what is that even? How do we do timing properly? And we'll take it from there. We have a whole ton of chapters to get through, but we'll get through them logically, step by step, and interestingly enough, we'll get not only through the mechanisms of diet, but also how to adhere to the diet. Because one real big question is, okay, now that we know what the ideal diet is, how do we get actually ourselves to do it and stick to it? And especially how do we get folks who are helping with diets stick to all these principles? Because it's one thing to know how to diet properly, it's another thing to get it done altogether. So we'll have another chapter after all this discussion about adherence, hunger management, so on and so forth. Folks, we'll see you in the next chapter. And I'm not